Hello. Okay. Hello, guys. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about object-oriented database. I'm pretty sure a lot of you have heard about or have used ORM before. Uh, this is pretty much for those who haven't. Uh, introduction, it's a social protocol because um, I hardly know any one of you here, right? except for Michael. That's it. <coughs> I'm pretty sure you guys haven't heard of me. So about me, I'm Eddie, Eddie Hidayat. I'm a full stack developer for 13 years. Uh, I may look like I'm 18, but <laughs> I'm actually pretty old. Uh, currently, I'm the head development of uh, Neuron Singapore. I have three front end developers and four back end developers in my team. It used to be four front end developers. Where's Hui Jing? Is he here? No, she can't. Hui Jing left. <laughs> Okay, how I got to where I'm here, I started off as a web designer and front-end developer back in 2001. And uh, I delved in PHP when I was in, in 2002. And then I was doing a freelancing. And then I got paid for eight websites. That was like a, an achievement. And then I joined Inu Solutions in Singapore for a very long time. And then I joined Publicis slash Neuron. <coughs> About Neuron, uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of you haven't heard of it. It is a Publicis worldwide company. Uh, Neuron just got bought over about last year, early last year. It is a design technology consultancy. And uh, our HQ is in Montreal, Canada. We've been in Singapore since 2015. May 2015, last year. Uh, this is going to be my quote for today. Up your dbub orm. <laughs> Up your db with ORM. Okay, what is ORM? ORM is a object relational mapping. It is a technique that um, allows you to query and manipulate your SQL normally SQL uh, query data using an object-oriented paradigm. <coughs> uh, so as a style, let's say you have three tables which are related to each other. I'll say you have a customer's table and then you have a customer's type. Say the customer's type could be a normal customer, a corporate customer and um, premium customer. And then each customer will have multiple transactions. So a typical re relational database would look this way, right? Where a customer belongs to a customer type and a customer has many transactions. And then transactions belongs to customer and so on. So these are the three keywords that you need to know, which is uh, has one, eh, is it three, four? <laughs> has one, has many, uh, what else? <laughs> belongs to, there's three, right? Yeah. Has one, has many, belongs to. There's also uh, has one has many true, uh, which involves a pivot table which I, unfortunately, I didn't have time to create the slides here. Uh, how it will look like. So basically, at the top, you can see how a normal SQL query will look like. And at the bottom, with ORM. <coughs> mm, how many of you here haven't used ORM before? You haven't? <coughs> okay. Uh, I believe this will be a good introduction for you. Uh, so, if you can, as you can see, right, um, it creates a more object-oriented approach to access your database. <coughs> uh, 
Do you have any, any questions on this code? Okay. Uh, but of, obviously, for every other anything, there are pros and cons. So I would like to give you what the pros are. It is dry, uh, dry as in don't repeat yourself. <coughs> so you write your data model in one place, and it's easier to update and maintain and reuse it. Uh, I believe it is perfect for collaboration, especially if you have a junior in your team. It creates some, it's uh, kind of make it less likely for them to mess, mess up. As, as you know, data is very sensitive. Uh, especially if it's a production one. And then if you mess up in query, sometimes a, a simple mistake can, can be costly, right? <coughs> and then a lot of stuff is done automatically from the database. Um, this can be, say, sanitizing the, your variable <coughs> automatically. Uh, and also, it forces you to write MVC codes. Uh, it will make your code look a lot more cleaner. And you don't have to write poorly form SQL. As you know, SQL can be very, very long, especially if there's a lot of joins and where, where, uh, where from and so on. <coughs> and then usually, uh, a lot of beginning backend developers would treat SQL as a Sub language. Uh, I have uh, juniors in my team as well, and I must say, <laughs> the <coughs> they won't go into deeper than inner joins and left join and all those kind of thing. And um, some some of them don't believe in learning more about SQL, and this is where I believe. Uh, as a, as a starter in PHP, I believe you should go into ORM first. That will make it easier for you to understand uh, SQL later on. Because SQL is really a very, it's, it can be a very complex uh, language. <coughs> but the cons is uh, you have to learn the ORM. There are a couple of ORM libraries around, <coughs> and each of them has their own style, their own concept. And you have to learn, uh, learn them through the documentation and such. And uh, the, another pain point is uh, you have to set it up in the models. <coughs> I will show you that later. Uh, for performance-wise, it can be OK, but only for simple queries, usually. For more complex queries, you can still do it with ORM, but it's still going to look a bit a bit uh, overwhelming. <coughs> I'm going to show you that later as well. And it abstract the database, uh, so it can be a trap for new programmers. You're going to find that um, a lot of um, OOP, right? You're going to do a lot of loops and then inner loops and so on. And this can be a trap for programmers where you will end up with a lot of queries to the database, like multiple queries in one session, where on a normal SQL statement, you can write one statement with one query. Right? <coughs> it can be a trap, although it can be optimized in ORM. The, what I like about it is, of course, it makes things fast. It is not something for you to use for a high performance kind of uh, system, definitely. But if you want to build something fast, uh, ORM is definitely the way to go. And then you do the optimization later. Um, sorry to jump in. Mm -hmm. You seem to be talking about this particular implementation of ORM, which is which may have these set of cons. Mm -hmm. There are other ORMs where you can build production quality, high scale, high performance uh, code, mm -hmm. which still gives you all the benefits of ORM. Because this particular implementation has querying in a particular style, 
is why we have these drawbacks, especially around you know SQL yeah. flexibility. Yeah, it uh, is. So, uh, I'm going to show you as well how to optimize an ORM as well later on. Right. What I was saying is there are other implementations mm -hmm. where we don't need to even optimize it. You have full query flexibility, mm -hmm. in which case your performance issues completely go away. And you can then focus on writing good object oriented code. Okay. Would you mind sharing uh, what does we it use ADODB? ADO. ADODB? ADIO? ADODB. ADO. It's a PHP open source project from 20 years ago. Okay. Um, and that allows you full query flexibility. And you don't have to set up models. Mm -hmm. So the setup completely goes away. Uh, it's not very lightweight, but for most production loads at reasonably high scale, it doesn't hinder your performance at all. Uh, and query flexibility is full. So you can even use joins and all kinds of complex statements uh, and still get objects returned. Mm -hmm. So you can you don't have to fall into any of these traps uh, with, with that implementation. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure there are a lot of there are others that are very optimized by now. I mean ORM is pretty old. So I'm pretty sure uh, someone has already created a more optimized version of it, so on. <coughs> uh, but uh, usually, uh, those very popular ones and those that come with the framework, they are not really that good uh, in terms of optimization. And for new PHP developers, uh, I'm pretty sure they are not aware of what goes on underlying the ORM. And therefore, when it comes to optimization, it's pretty hard for them. Yeah, uh, definitely. This this is uh, something not for advanced programmers like you. <laughs> uh, this is simply an introduction to ORM uh, for those who haven't used it. Because I love ORM. It's just like you can create something fast, like in one day and so on. <coughs> okay. Before that, um, ORM is not the perfect answer. <laughs> and don't try to write your own ORM unless you have too much free time. <laughs> uh, there's two very popular uh, PHP ORM, which is the Propel and Doctrine, which you should check it out. <coughs> but for the demonstration I'm going to show, I'm not using either. But uh, the point is, <coughs> uh, I'm introducing the concept of ORM. And Propel and Doctrine will have a similar concept, a bit um, different style or different syntax and so on. And the best is to get to know one ORM and be very good at it. <coughs> the moment you're very good in ORM, it's pretty easy to jump to another ORM uh, <coughs> brand. Right? <coughs> okay, I'm going to show you a database table which I created just now. Can you guys see? Oh. All right. <coughs> okay, so I created a cust uh, So let's say this is an e-commerce shop, which is called My Shop. And you have a few customers, Bra, John, May, and so on. And then you can see there's a type ID. The type ID refers to what kind of customers they are, whether they are normal customers, corporate customers, or premium customers. And then each of the customers will have, will have make transaction on your shop. <coughs> Do you guys have any questions about this? So it's pretty easy, right? Like each transaction belongs to a customer, and then each customer belongs to a customer type, and each customer has many transactions, and so on. <coughs> and then when we go to uh, the code itself, how are we going to query and list down the customers?
Okay. How do I do this? Command plus. Command plus. Can you see? It's small, right? Yeah, it's kind of small. Um, thing is, this net beans, right? Yeah, net beans. The thing net beans better go to. I think it's all the preferences. Um, uh, font and code, font and color, font and color. Third one, third one. Let's increase the. Very small. Very big, lah. Twenty four. Okay. Bam. Yeah. There you go. <coughs> uh, <coughs> for this one, I'm using a Kona framework, but we can ignore all this framework stuff. It's just about uh, the ORM. <coughs> so this is how. It's just very simple. You don't have to do that whole select from select star from customer's table. But the downside, as I mentioned earlier, that you have to set it up. That there's three tables, therefore you have to set up three models. And as you can see, I set out the customer model. It belongs to type. And the model related to type is the customer type. This actually refers to this file. And the foreign key is the type ID. <coughs> which is this column, type ID. And same goes with transaction. It belongs to a customer. And the foreign key is customer ID, where you can find it here. And then the customer itself. Actually, it has many as well. Okay. And this. <laughs> okay, never mind. <coughs> uh, okay, so after everything has been set up. You can simply do the customer, create an object, and put the object in the customer's variable, and then you can start looping the customers. Uh, this can also, usually this can be done in uh, two ways. Another way could be, say, new, new model customer. But then you will have to assign another variable this way. I would I prefer this one liner thing on line nineteen and twenty. <coughs> this the these two lines would be more clearer for beginners. But I believe the the first one is clear enough. <coughs> so from this action customers, what I'm doing is just listing out the customers. Burr, John, May, John, May, Meow. And then this will list the customers and the customers type. <coughs> Over here you can see how, where the ORM advantage is. You don't need to do another query. You just have to customer type. So, the demo here. Oops. <coughs> so, bro is a normal customer. How did it know that type refers to the name column? 
again, this is the advantage of ORM again. Over here, I set this up to string. So whenever I try to echo that object, it will try to convert to string and return this. So it makes things a lot more clear. It makes <coughs> your code more easier to understand as well. And over here we have um, by type. That means you do a query on the types table first, and then you find which customers in each of these types. Uh, as you can see, there's this inner loop thing that, that can be a trap to beginners. Of course, this can be optimized. But um, if you're doing, trying to do something fast, this is definitely the way to go. And I'll show you the result. So on a normal customer, there's bra. On the corporate customers, there's John May. And then on the premium customers list, there's these two. <coughs> OK, for the, the optimization that I was talking about, <coughs> ORM can be quite intimidating when it comes to very advanced query. Uh, this is where, let's say if you have to calculate how much each, each customer spends in total in your shop, this is how the ORM is going to look like. <coughs> I'm pretty sure there are other ORM that can do better, uh, or maybe that o OBE. <coughs> so what this does is actually it just uh, generates the SQL query. I will show you the query. You can see at the top, are you able to see the query at the top? It's actually select some and so on. Yeah? <coughs> this is the actual query that is using. So uh, obviously this can be made easier by refactoring. So put it put this whole chunk in the model, whereas uh, get customers total spend. Let's say if I put this in a model, it probably going to look Ah, mm. oh, it's just too much. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, so <coughs> I hope I made a good uh, introduction to ORM. Sure. Uh, reason being, I do. I've been using this for very long, like, and frankly speaking, I'm pretty reliant on it. And I don't think I can go back to doing like queries and stuff because it's just too cumbersome. And um, the that ORM that you were sharing about, uh, That's ADO. <coughs> this one? Yeah. <laughs> so, ADO DB is a general DB layer. It has relational as well as non relational support. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, not sorry. Object oriented as well as non object oriented support. Uh, and I use the object oriented version of it. And it's I think it combines the best of world, but it gives you proper ORM layer, but it also gives you full query flexibility. Okay. Uh, I will check it out. <coughs> yeah. Uh, usually, the ORM libraries will provide uh, simple optimization. Uh, like in this case, right, I am trying to uh, load customer type and as well as the customers. It can actually do a simple join with uh, customer. So 
what this does is it will actually do one single query, put it, put all the results in that object, and then you can loop it. It, it won't do two queries. Without this second one, it's going to do two queries. Yeah, so there's a difference. Uh, of course, a lot of other optimization um, features in the rest, uh, doctrine especially. Any questions? How do you express relationships with other, other tables? How, do you, how would you declare a relationship, say, customer has many transactions? How, how is it declared here? Here? Yeah, I mean, in, when you create, when you, when you declare, or you create a customer, do you, do you actually set up and say this guy has uh, a customer who have many transactions, or is it more like you you write a query and send just do a where join? Yeah, this this why I was a bit, oh, I was a bit because ah, okay. I didn't I didn't set it up, but it works. I don't know why. Okay. <laughs> you know, yeah. this, this kind of case, right? My code works, I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean it's supposed to it's supposed to have this. Has many. And uh, transactions. Right? And then you had the uh, same thing. Oops. The model and so on. Right? So is this like Lara this is Laravel or this is Kohana. Kohana, mm -hmm. I see. Okay. Yeah, so mo I, 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 when I was doing cake PHP you could also do something like that. You could like declare it if you say this guy belongs to this guy. Then I do a, a dot uh, dot uh, or I tell you to give me all the uh, related transactions. You actually use a foreign key to just kind of discover what is the what are the associated with records and give it to you. So I think one of the good things about an ORM is that all this is you get this for free. You get like you don't need to declare you don't need to explicitly say get me all the transactions. Mm. You just get like customer transactions and give you all the transactions, which is yeah. very easy. So and especially if you use can, IDE, right? you can do that. Technically setting that up is quite easy. Uh, it gets very messy. If you're trying to put that into a non real code base and run it in production. Yeah. Uh, yeah of course. Basically, it kills performance. ORM, I think ORM as it is, um, it's not optimized for like, it's pretty, but it's not really like, performant sometimes. I question that, Brad. I'm saying the moment you find your sweet spot, uh, uh, it can actually be very interesting. Yeah. Actually, agree. if you know how it works behind it, it's pretty easy to um, optimize. So that's the key thing. You will have to know what goes on behind it. When you are getting the customer object, it is also fetching the type. So I don't know. I don't want type also, but it is having in the object, so it is taking more memory. I, think. The you, I guess you can. You can kind of say yeah. only one uh, certain certain. Are you referring to this? You can. Oh. Oh. That second example. This one. Yeah, oh, actually, this is the second query. On line line thirty nine, it will do a second query. Oh. On the object, you, when you it's not a method. You are directly accessing the property, so it's yeah, already when, fetched in the. When I access yeah. when I access name, oh. it's already in the customer's table right yes. column. Yeah. But when I access I, it detects that I is not part of the customer. Table and therefore you would do the second query. What about runtime? Yeah, in runtime. It will fetch in the database. All right. So if you if you don't want it to do uh, two queries, uh, any other ORM would have this uh, type. So you would do a join statement and get all the results, put it in the object. But the forty nine line number will be same in this case also. The what? Uh, I have to uh, face the type same way, even you write it with. Yeah. Uh, like I mentioned, this a very basic ORM usually uh, are not performing. <laughs> yeah. When you start to do this whole looping, you know, this, uh, they will do multiple queries. Definitely something that you can, it's easier to comprehend, easier to develop. Uh, but when it comes to optimization, uh, that's where you have to look deep 
inside the ORM to figure out how to optimize it. Yeah, it's not something where uh, I know some people are obsessed about optimize as you code, right? I I don't. I mean, do the necessary, yes, but don't to be too obsessed with it. So as far as you can, optimize later. Yeah. Any other questions? Hmm? In, in certain or uh, this ORM I used before is PHP Active Record. Mm -hmm. It actually has a way of saying if you, if you know they're going to be fetching this other entity, uh, you can tell it to I'm going to get all these other entities, and you basically make a a joint uh, a second query which has all the IDs of the associated. <coughs> so as, instead of doing one query at a time, you actually do another query with within within uh, where it could, something is in this this list of uh, basically pass in the list of foreign keys you should then fetch all the all the records in one query rather than uh, rather using than join some, something yeah. you control what to fetch or not yeah okay. normally a join is actually a second query oh. you uh, PHP active record has this function it's a I don't know what to call it but so basically you can tell it I need to get this other stuff you basically from the first query derive or the list of keys and make a second query with just that list of foreign keys, uh, okay. which makes it a lot more. So you make, it's basically just making two queries instead of one, which is quite handy. Cool. Yeah. Uh, another feature I would like to point out is that um, I don't know if Doctrine has it, uh, but I, de I developed something here with, where I can um, generate the list of columns from the from the table such right and then it will it's gonna sound be silly but it's gonna write on itself and put it here yeah so it's gonna look something like what method right what is it prop Yeah, something like that. So you will list down all the columns here so that you can get the autocomplete in your ID. So you don't have to remember what is the column name and whatnot. Yeah, so it's great. The script you wrote, is it? Yeah, it's a script I wrote. It's, um, it's inside here. Cool. I don't know. Where am I? Okay. Very long, like it's a very big file. Yeah, it is. <laughs> okay. All right, this this one. <laughs> Generate list of possible properties for the current model. So, yeah, this thing will query the database for all the fields, and it will generate the properties. Oh. Yeah. Put it. Cool. Yeah. Because I love autocomplete, so I don't have to remember so much. Who remembers all the PHP functions? <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, any other questions for him? No? All right. Thank all right. you, Eddie. Thank you.